So if the same people who buckled last time round now say to us, make me Prime Minister, and we will leave the EU on the 31st of October, it's a little bit of an issue of trust there. Here's the problem. Uh, of the candidates that have put their names forward, all of them supported that terrible new European treaty, the worst deal in history. Even those like Raab, uh, McVeigh, Boris, even those that have condemned it and twice voted against it, then voted for it. So if the same people who buckled last time round now say to us, make me Prime Minister, and we will leave the EU on the 31st of October. It's a little bit of an issue of trust there. Look, you know, one of those three or somebody else might surprise all of us, and they might in the next few weeks come out and say, this is what we're going to do. But uh, at the moment, I'm very, very unsure. Uh, you know, 108 times, Theresa May told us, we were leaving on the 29th of March. Mm -hmm. Now they're all telling us we're leaving on the 31st of October. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. Let's see. All I can say is this. You know, we've shown a brand new party and we've shown in the European elections what can be done because there are so many people out there that think democracy matters and you've got to honour the will of the people. If we don't leave on the 31st of October, then I think the Brexit party can go on and perhaps do something dramatic in a general election too. His entourage have been told by number 10 that he's not to meet me. Isn't that bizarre? I mean, isn't that absolutely bizarre? Doesn't it sum up why British politics needs to change? The small-minded, petty-mindedness of the Conservative Party in this case, but equally, <coughs> had Labour been office, it would have been the same. So he's been told not to, which is ridiculous. I mean, I supported his campaign publicly. I do speak to him occasionally on the phone. I meet him, I've met him many times. I mean, we, you know, we get on well. I want, I want him in the States to go and see him and we chat. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Nigel Farage. Isn't it ridiculous? I mean, America is our most important security partner. America is our most important military partner. America is the biggest foreign investor in the United Kingdom. You know, America arguably is our greatest ally out there around the world. And the one person in this country that's got a good bridge, if you like, to Donald Trump and his entourage is me, you would have thought in the national interest I might actually be useful to the British government. But because of the way British politics works, unless you're in the same party and wear the same coloured rosette, they don't want to know. And, it's an, and it actually reinforces my view that we've got to change politics for good in this country. I'm afraid so. <laughs> I'd rather not. So you're not looking forward to it at all? Not much, no. Although, 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 you know, I do feel with the team of people we've got in the Brexit Party, we should be part of these negotiations. We should be working to make sure we're absolutely okay, ready to leave the 31st vote for you, or is this a vote not for everyone else? Well, you can read it either way if you want, can't you? But it, it's a bit of both, isn't it, to be honest with you? I mean, it has to be a bit of both. We were supposed to leave on March the 29th. That date was embedded in people's minds. It hasn't happened. That's allowed the meteoric rise of this party. And if we don't leave on October the 31st, this party will reach higher still. Have you got enough in you to become a fourth for general elections? Well, uh, the current polling suggests that's the case, but look, there's a long way to go, and we as a new party have got a hell of a lot to do, long I know way, that. Long way to go, how do you feel after this? How do you feel after tonight, up down the country? Well, I've had six great fun weeks, I've enjoyed it thoroughly, um, and I think, you know, whatever the establishment try and do, and I know there are people that don't want to leave, but I do believe the Brexit team is out of the bottle, we're going to leave, we've just got a few more battles to fight. Michael, what's your plan? What's what's go back next? to Brussels, what is, what is, what is And how, how are you going to actually keep that? Well, in the, in, at the end of the day, it's, it's about what voters want. Um, and I think either, either the Conservative or Labour parties take us towards Brexit or they're going to have to be replaced. It's as simple as that. For both Article 50 parties have done better than the Brexit party today. Um, I, I, I'm, well, I'm sorry, I, 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 I don't know how you do your arithmetic, but I mean, I, I don't quite get 1. that. 1.1 million votes. Yes. For parties that 
back revoking Article 50. Yes, in, in, in the South East. In the South East. Yes, and many more than that for those that want to leave. Because the Conservatives say they want to leave, UKIP want to leave. It's, it's, so there's, there's more votes on that side in the South East, oh, but on no, the other really side. The so don't listen, one, yeah. don't listen, don't listen to the nonsense that you're being given from the Liberal Democrats okay. on the stage. Actually, if you look at it all, it's about 52-48 in so, favour of leave. So is this a vote for no deal Brexit? Oh, absolutely. This, this is a vote that says put no deal Brexit back on the table, make it part of our negotiations, because without that, you've got no chance of getting a sensible free trade deal. And I want us, as the Brexit party, to be engaged in that. But it's also a vote that says, 31st of October is the next really big day in this process. If we don't leave on that day, then you could expect the Brexit party to repeat this kind of surprise in, in the next general election. And should you have a seat at the negotiating table? Uh, whether it's me or somebody else in the Brexit party isn't really the point. We as a party have campaigned for this in the last six weeks. We've got a mandate. We should be part of the team. How would you feel about working with the uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson? I'll work with anybody. If, if, if it's to achieve Brexit, I'd work with anybody. Just realise he looks like a smug, white Kermit the Frog. He has frog lips. Right, this is Nigel versus Twitter. Uh, I know uh, this is the one media where people can be really beastly. I've not pre-seen any of these. Let's give it a go. Mark Rudden says, he's probably the only person in the world who loves the sound of his own voice more than Piers Morgan does. That's quite a contest, isn't it, really? A man who's never been elected as an MP thinks he's running the country. Suppose that could be either of them. Well, um, Mark, all I can say is that I have been an MEP for 20 years. Uh, I have campaigned up and down the length and breadth of this country. Uh, whether you like me or hate me, uh, I think you could at least credit me. I have shifted quite a lot of minds on this question of Europe. A rambling man says, your milkshake brings all the fascists to the yard or something. We'll move on. Evie says, Jesus suffering. Can someone inform me as to why and how Nigel Farage has managed to gain a majority in this election? I'm completely done with this country. Goodbye. Uh, Dave the Happy Singer says, this dog looks like Nigel Farage, right? Okay. Um, I was actually compared to a meerkat, not a dog, but never mind. And shout out to big Nigel Farage, doing what he does best to the establishment. What a beacon of hope we have in him and his handsome face and sharp suit and his modern views. Good Lord, well, there you are. Some people like me. Let's try Rob Goats. You're doing great work, Mr. Farage. I'll buy you a pint if ever I see you up your local. I'll be there in about an hour's time. Uh, Chris Wade Evans says, Nigel Farage is the most dangerous man in Britain. In fact, what he's doing here, he's retweeting an article that appeared in the New York Times yesterday. So I had a lot of friends in America uh, texting me to say, this is what some parts of America think of you. I've got to tell you, I'm rather pleased about that. Dan says, I still haven't got my mother a Christmas present. Did Nigel Farage release a sexy calendar this year? No! But my mum's done several and done them for charity and raised over £50,000 for the local hospice. Not bad, eh? George Fairburn says, just realise he looks like a smug, white Kermit the Frog. He has frog lips. Takes all sorts, you know. Justin says, I can confidently predict that Nigel Farage will um, go away at the instant he is faced with any expectation of responsibility. Well, I tell you what, Justin, I want us in the Brexit party to be part of the government team to get us ready for leaving on the 31st of October with no deal. I want responsibility. You're wrong. Annalisia says, Nigel Farage, I could seriously marry you. Well, I don't know. I wouldn't recommend it. Several have tried. It never seems to work very well. Izzy says, don't want nudes unless you're... Oh, thank you. We'll move on. Uh, Mike Harris says, if you like him or hate him, this is a guy who has used democracy to bring change. Wish more countries would learn that you don't have to use force. It's a big point, uh, actually, Mike, you know, that democracy is uh, what keeps the country peaceful. The trouble is, you've got to respect democratic votes. The loser has to consent to what's just happened. And since the referendum, there's been a bit of a problem with that. And that's it. We're done. Thank you, everybody, um, for your mostly good contributions. Nigel Farage, I could seriously marry you. Well, I don't know. I wouldn't recommend it. Several have tried. It never seems to work very well. The impression that's often given by Nicola Sturgeon is that almost everybody in Scotland thinks the European Union is a fantastic idea, when the reality is 
perhaps 30 percent of her own voters, because they're actually genuinely nationalists, voted to leave the European Union. So I think the SNP are in a funny place with this. You can want separation from the United Kingdom, but don't sell it as independence, because you cannot be an independent country and be part of the EU. Any future deals to get Brexit? What's your view? Is you know, when this appalling worst deal in history, new European treaty, hove into view, Boris wrote in the Telegraph, quite rightly in my view, that it would lead to vassalage. We become a slave state, and then what did he do? Ah, uh, yes, he voted for it. So he tells us it's appalling. He votes for it, and I worry that Boris puts party loyalty above his own conscience and what's good for the country. And even if Boris now says, "Oh no, no, it's okay, Nigel. I didn't really mean to vote for it." Well, how could I trust what he says? How could I believe anything any of these two mainstream parties tell us after three years, frankly, of open lies and deceit? Is that clear enough? Yeah, that's great. Good. Cool. Thank you very much. Uh, what do you make of your reception in Exeter? Oh, what you would expect. What you would expect. I mean, it's very interesting, isn't it? What you've got happening here is the people, very clearly, now want to leave with a no-deal Brexit, but there are small groups of people who are very, very militant and very angry. And this is because we've had leading politicians not accept the greatest democratic result in the history of our country, and that has radicalised some people. So there are some very strong opinions on both sides of this, but I know where the majority is, and the majority want Brexit finished so that we can get on with the rest of our lives. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Ask you, what's your reaction to Gordon Brown saying it's time you reveal who you're going to? Absolutely disgusting smear. I mean, this from the man who was part of a Labour Party who, through Lord Levy, uh, were put, were, shall we say, making a lot of big donors members of the House of Lords. How yeah. dare yeah. he? Yeah. How dare yeah. he? Yeah. Most of our money has been raised by people giving £25 to become registered supporters. And over 100,000, nearly 110,000 of them now have done that. And frankly, this smacks, I think, of jealousy. Because the other parties simply can't do this. Do you feel it is time, though, to, to tell people and just be open? If you How open can we be? I mean, if you want to come and sit in my office tomorrow, you come tomorrow to my office, I will show you the computer live time with the clicks as £25 at a time comes through from people over living living all over this country. What, what you've got here, what you've got here are the conspiracy theorists doing their utmost to try and delegitimize what is the fastest growing political movement this country's ever seen. Thank you very much. Can I put the mic on you, Anne? Yes, sure. Thank you very much. La democracy, is la dem democracy is democracy and we must respect it. We must respect British democracy and the way it has voiced uh, the, so done. That's the last time you are applauding here. <laughs> And to some extent, I'm really surprised that you are here. You are fighting for the exit. The British people voted in favor of the exit. Why are you here? Isn't it funny? You know, when I came here 17 years ago, and I said that I wanted to lead a campaign to get Britain to leave the European Union, you all laughed at me. Well, I have to say, you're not laughing now, are you? And the reason you're so upset, the reason you're so angry, has been perfectly clear from all the angry exchanges this morning. You, as a political project, are in denial. You're in denial that your currency is failing. You're in denial... Well... Just, well, just look at the Mediterranean. No, no, no. As a, as a policy to impose poverty on Greece and the rest of the Mediterranean, you've done very well. And you're in denial over Mrs. Merkel, Mrs. Merkel's call last year for as many, any people as possible to cross the Mediterranean into the European Union has led to massive divisions between countries and within countries. But the biggest problem you've got, and the reason... The main reason the United Kingdom voted the way that it did 
is that you have, by stealth, by deception, without ever telling the truth to the British or the rest of the peoples of Europe, you have imposed upon them a political union. You've imposed upon them a political union. And when the people in 2005 in the Netherlands and France voted against that political union, when they rejected the Constitution, you simply ignored them and brought the Lisbon Treaty in through the back door. What happened? What happened last Thursday was a remarkable result. It was indeed a seismic result, not just for British politics, for European politics, but perhaps even for global politics too. Because what the little people did, what the ordinary people did, what the people who, who have been oppressed over the last few years and seen their living standards go down, they rejected the multinationals, they rejected the merchant banks, they rejected big politics, and they said, actually, we want our country back, we want our fishing waters back, we want our borders back, we want to be an independent, self-governing, normal nation, and that is what we have done, and that is what must happen. And in doing so, and in doing so, we now offer a beacon of hope to Democrats across the rest of the European continent. I'll make one prediction this morning. The United Kingdom will not be the last member state to leave the European Union. So the question, the question is, what do we do next? Now, it is up to the British government to invoke Article 50. And I have to say that I don't think we should spend too long in doing it. I totally agree. Uh, Mr Juncker, that the British people have voted, we need to make sure that it happens. But what I would like to see is a grown-up and sensible attitude to how we negotiate a different relationship. Now, now I, know, I know that virtually none of you have ever done a proper job in your lives <laughs> or worked or worked in business, or worked in trade, or indeed ever created a job. But listen, just listen. Herr Farage, Augenblick. Liebe, liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen, bei, aller, bei allem Verständnis für Ihre Aufregung, Sie benehmen sich gerade, wie UKIP sich normalerweise hier in diesem Haus benimmt. Also kopieren... Kopieren Sie sie nicht. Herr Farage, ich will Ihnen allerdings eins sagen. Ihre Äußerung, dass die Kollegen hier in diesem Hause niemals einen ordentlichen Job gemacht hätten, die müssen nicht von sich auf andere schließen. Das geht so nicht. Thank you. Now you're quite, uh, you're quite right, Mr. Schulz. UKIP used to protest against the establishment, and now the establishment protests against UKIP. So something has happened here. Let us listen to some simple, pragmatic economics. We, between us, between your countries and my country, we do an enormous amount of business in goods and services. That trade is mutually beneficial to both of us. That trade matters. If you were to decide to cut off your noses, to spite your faces, and to reject any idea of a sensible trade deal, the consequences would be far worse for you than it would be for us. And I. Even, even no deal is better for the United Kingdom than the current rotten deal that we've got. But if we were to move to a position where tariffs were reintroduced on products like motor cars, then hundreds of thousands of German workers would risk losing their jobs. So why don't we just be pragmatic, sensible, grown up, realistic, and let's cut between us Let's cut between us a sensible tariff-free deal and thereafter, and thereafter recognise that the United Kingdom will be your friend, that we will trade with you, we will cooperate with you, we will be your best friends in the world. But do that, do it sensibly, and allow us to go off and pursue our global ambitions and future. Thank you.
you. It is quite extraordinary that we can have in this room the head honchos of Brussels, Mr Juncker, the Belgian Prime Minister, the leaders of the big groups, uh, to discuss the future of the European project, and there's barely been a mention of the biggest, most dramatic event that has ever happened since the foundation of the European treaties 60 years ago, namely Brexit. You don't want to talk about Brexit. And I wonder whether it had actually ever occurred to you, Mr Juncker, that when David Cameron came here to negotiate with you, had you given him just a few modest concessions, had you given him the ability to control our borders a little bit more, Brexit wouldn't have happened. But no, we don't discuss that. No, what we do is we say to ourselves that our citizens want more Europe. I've heard it again and again this morning. There are some, like Mr Verhofstadt here, who seem to think that this flag represents a European identity, and he clearly identifies as a European. Many of you in this room identify as Europeans, but you're missing something. The peoples of Europe do not identify with that flag. They do not identify with these institutions. There is no... Oh, well, if you're on the payroll, it's easy to say it works, isn't it? But actually, out there in the real world, there is not a European demos. There is not a European identity. Maybe, but maybe, there may be one exception. There may be one exception, and that could be Belgium. Because nobody ever dares tell the truth about Belgium. Belgium is not a nation. It's an artificial creation. I know the Brits did it. Maybe once again we can be blamed. But the truth is, there are two parts of Belgium. They speak different languages. They dislike each other intensely. There's no national TV station. There's no national newspaper. Belgium is not a nation. And maybe that's why you're happy to sign up to a higher European level. Well, if Belgium wants it, that's fine. But I can assure you, and you can scream and shout all you like, just look at the election result. You're losing, folks. You're losing. Brexit is the first brick out of the wall. You've learnt none of the lessons. The days of this project are over. We want to live in nation states, not false artificial creations. Thank you, everybody. Have a lovely time. Oh, enjoy the European elections next year. They're going to be great fun.